Now this is an incredible move and I'm so happy we're seeing it in a video game. Very, very rare. If you get that submission, you're winning submission of the year when the awards come out. If you've established that your knee is very dangerous against your opponent, they're gonna fear it, back up and cover up. So you can just start throwing knees like rain. Now this is how you execute an arm bar. You either tap or his arm's gonna snap. Make your choice. Welcome back to Gameology, RJ Clifford here. Today we're gonna take a look at Tekken 7. I'm just the man to do that. So I'm a retired fighter, washed up has been. I have a Sirius XM radio show where I've been forcing my MMA opinions on others. And now I'm gonna do it to all you. All right, let's take a look at Steve. The uh, fine people at Tekken really got creative with their names. All right, uppercut while leaning back matrix mode. Now your head is completely out of the way to get countered, but I don't know how much power you can generate there. Luckily he makes it up by standing in the pocket and throwing a combo. So Steve's a boxer, you can tell. Overhand right is your standard issue mixed martial arts moneymaker knockout. Because you can generate a lot of power, throw one strike at one time. It's called an overhand right because it's going over the guard. And it's a looping punch, so you got a lot of power. The most powerful shots in mixed martial arts. Oh, the disrespect. Three hooks in a row, followed by a right hand. Steve's boxing coach is doing backflips outside the octagon right now. Okay. Jumping foot stomp, overhand right. You see foot stomps in mixed martial arts a lot. Normally it's just them kind of jockeying for position against the cage and they're just kind of bored because all their arms are taken up and they foot stomp. But using it to set up a strike out of the gate, well, I'm not recommending it, but it'd be a curveball. Hmm. Look at the hand speed on Steve. It's left, right, left, right. So you'll see this lean back technique that Steve is doing. Some of the really, really good strikers like an Anderson Silva will do that. It's part actual move and part just showing off. Steve's using it to avoid a clinch though, which I want to recommend, but to avoid like a big head kick, that will really disgruntle your opponent. Jab to the body and a punch to the leg. You don't see a lot of that. Benson Henderson used to do it every now and then. Pretty dangerous, but it's definitely a strike your opponent doesn't train for. Body head, body head, beautiful. Now look at him. Now he's circling around his opponent. This is great boxing technique, any sort of striking technique. Normally when you face a guy off, you're both kind of framed against each other. If you can circle away from them, they no longer can throw punches straight like they want to. They have to start punching off to the side, which means there's no power. So if you can circle around somebody while always facing them, you'll always have a giant advantage. For a lot of fighters, it's 100% of their offense. Get outside their foot, circle punch, circle punch. And if you can strike heavily while also moving your feet, that's the sign of a very technical boxer. Jab, 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 body jab, circling, circling, and down he goes. Marduk, or Marduk. So he's got the MMA gloves on and knee pads. So you know he's ready to go. He knows what he's up to. He came well prepared. Video games love those uppercuts. Bam, so you just send him flying into the air. All right, here's a takedown, mount, ground and pound. What are you doing? You never give up mount. What is he doing? All right, here comes a big double leg takedown, slam, love it, straightened him out, great technique. And then he does the Kazushi Sakuraba double judo chop. Look it up if you haven't seen it. Absolute disrespect and effective, and he's done. Double uppercut, beautiful. Right hand, left hand, good night, Irene. All right, single leg, high crotch. So here's the crotch lift with the single leg. Instead of taking him down to his back for a takedown, he just crunches him right on his nuts. And remember, mixed martial arts, there's no rules, only suggestions. Cheat as much as you can. All right, so I didn't know where this was going. Power bomb, no. It was like a reverse backwards crucifix somersault, ash their head in the pavement. I think you're more likely to hurt yourself there, but if you can kind of kamikaze it, take him out while you take yourself out, this is the move for you. This is a beautiful technique. He throws a right hand, fakes that he's shooting, so his opponent normally would try to sprawl. He'd throw his legs back, put his arms forward to defend the takedown, and right when he's doing that, boop, throw that uppercut. Beautiful technique. Flying knee, always a great technique when you're taller than your opponent, because you don't have to get your knee as high to knock him out. Okay, this is pure Muay Thai right here. Downward elbow, and then coming up with the knee. Like if you find an opponent who's blocking like this, trying to make block hooks, block kicks to the side, you come straight down the middle. Downward elbow right on the forehead, cut him up, 
upward knee when their head comes down. Bam. KO. All right, here's Paul. Maybe my favorite character in the entire game. Not just because of the sweet blonde uh, haircut that I had, I think, when I was 10. So he's wearing gi pants full, but he's also wearing a sleeveless gi on top, which means he has freedom to move his arms because it's not as restrictive. But the gi pants means he can still get friction for when he's trying to do submission moves or trying to hold on to somebody. And he's got MMA gloves on to protect his hands. He is ready for battle. We saw some guys in the old school pride fighting championship days do outfits like this. He's bringing it back. Right hand, spinning hook kick, left to the body. Great balance, excellent job. Ooh, pimp knuckles. That's not technically a spinning back fist. It's more of like a pimp knuckles. Bam. Okay, here we go, flying armbar attempt. This is great technique. Traps the arm, jumps off of his bottom foot, throws his right leg over the head, uses that momentum almost like, a, like an ax kick to throw his leg down on the guy's head to bring him to the floor. His problem, he didn't hang on to the arm. So he used the momentum and his opponent just went flying in that direction. What he should have done was make sure that he had complete control of the arm, squeeze his knees together, tighten his legs, and then he would have held the move and gotten the finish. But instead he just got a cool throw out of it. Okay, double leg takedown, right into mount, ground and pound. Now this is how you execute an arm bar. Standard issue, beautiful technique, Double leg, mount, ground and pound, trap the arm, throw the leg over. This time his opponent wasn't able to get his arm free. So right there, either tap or his arm's gonna snap. Make your choice. Again, leg kick, really powerful leg kicks, especially against a really tall opponent, really damaging. It can make them weak on their legs, make them lose their balance. If you get lucky, maybe you'll catch a ligament, something like that, injure their knee. Then you're fighting a one-legged fighter. If I had a choice to fight a fighter with two legs or one, give me one all day long and twice on Tuesday. Rolling Thunder, one of the most exciting, high risk, low reward moves in MMA, but it will get you fans all the time. Just jumping somersault kick. Hopefully you don't land on your head. All right, here's Fak Humram. Uh, make sure you pronounce that correctly, otherwise you'll get in trouble. Flying double knee, so he jumps up. Normally when you jump up, and you're in a right-handed stance where your left leg's in front of your right leg, your flying knee is gonna be your right knee. You'll jump off your back leg, throw that flying knee. You can get more power and more distance if you switch knee it. So he jumps up with his right knee up and then his left knee follows. So it can really throw your opponent off. Jose Aldo got a knockout like this in the WEC in about 10 seconds. One of the scariest knockouts you'll see Jose Aldo do. One of the best TIE fighters in mixed martial arts. And you can tell he's definitely a TIE fighter. You can tell by the fact that his hands are wrapped up the way they are. His shorts, those are uh, TIE boxing shorts. The way his stance is, the way his shins are wrapped. Clearly a TIE fighter before I saw him throw one single strike. And the TIE fighters are nuts. In Thailand, they have like five-year-olds doing professional TIE fights. 100 dudes smoking cigarettes, waving dollar bills around, betting on five-year-olds fighting each other. These guys were born and bred to fight. They've been doing it their entire lives. Don't mess with a TIE fighter. And they're really big on kicks. So you see he does a right kick and then a left kick. So he's able to cover a lot of distance with these big kicks. Instead of going back to his normal stance, he throws the right kick, the right foot steps, and then he throws the left kick because the left kick's behind him. So if you have a retreating opponent, you can throw these big kicks and just follow up. Beautiful tie work. Front kick and head kick. In Muay Thai, they call that front kick a teep, which is great for just keeping a fighter at bay. Not a lot of power, but it can position them right where you want them. Bam, head kick comes right behind him. Muay Thai is the art of eight limbs. You have your fists, your elbows, your knees, and your shins. In boxing, regular Western boxing, you just have your fists. In Thai boxing, you have all eight. And notice I said shins, not feet. You never wanna kick with your foot because you can break your foot. Your shin is much more powerful. The punches aren't worth nearly as much points as the other ones. So you'll see, obviously, Thai boxers can punch with their hands fine, but they're really powerful with their kicks, knees, and elbows. All right. Thai knees from the clinch. This clinch that's very popular in mixed martial arts where you have both fists behind the head of your opponent is called the Thai clinch. You can control them, you can move them where you want them to go. It wears on them more than it wears on you energy-wise. And most importantly, you can throw beautiful knees because you can pull their head as you're throwing your knee up. One of the most dangerous places to be in a fight. This is the most standard issue Muay Thai combo that exists. Left hook, 
right leg kick because you're using your momentum to turn your body when you're throwing a hook and you've wound up your kick to turn it and throw your right kick this way. Maybe the most basic combo in all of tie fighting. Left hook, right kick. Okay, this switch kick uh, on the left. The reason why TIE fighters throw their left kick more often than their right to the head is because if you have a right-handed fighter versus another right-handed fighter, if I throw my left kick, it's to their open side. So instead of coming over their shoulder and kind of behind them, it's coming right up to their face. Shin to chin, that's what you're looking for in a good head kick. Elbows are fantastic strikes. You're much less likely to break your elbow than you are your hand. Your hands are just a bunch of little tiny bones. But an elbow is very dangerous. You can throw an elbow right to the head, skull, you're probably never gonna damage your elbow. And even better, great for causing cuts. If I throw an elbow right on your forehead on that thin part of your skin up here, bam, cut, they'll have blood in their eyes, they won't be able to see, devastating attack, and it doesn't take a lot of power to make a good cut. All right, three knees in a row. Dangerous, but doable. Because when you throw knees, you're on one foot, you can kind of see what they're doing, but you're also susceptible to a lot of counterattacks. So they kick that leg that you're standing on. But if you've established that your knee is very dangerous against your opponent, they're gonna fear it, back up and cover up. So you can just start throwing knees like rain. I got this. All right, here's Josie, not the outlaw Josie Wells, Josie the fighter. This is great, fakes a shot and then goes leg kick. You can tell she's a well-rounded fighter, right? Fakes the takedown like a wrestler, throws the kick like a kickboxer. All right, front flip into a straight kick. I don't know how that works through the laws of physics, but it certainly worked right there. All right, spinning back fist, great, great tactic for covering a lot of distance and doing a lot of power. Oh, this is pretty. Body shot, leg kick, Superman punch from an opposite stance. If I tried to do that, I would fall on my face. Josie does it, she gets a knockout. Ooh, great leg kick. Oh, leg kicks, come on. See, if I'm Josie's opponent, I would really work on checking the leg kicks. If I was Josie, I'd invest in a couple more sports bras. It's kind of going everywhere. Flying downward elbow, devastating attack, splits the guard of the opponent. Ooh, what's this? Turns around, grabs on the opponent, knee over the head. Never seen that before. I would love to see that in a real fight. All right, here comes Brian. So here he is mixing the punches and kicks together really well. Front kick, overhand right, left uppercut, leg kick. Now we're just mixing the boxing up. Left to the body, right to the body. Body punches are great because they do a lot of different sorts of things for you. One, it's another target, so now your opponent is worried about getting his body punched, so he'll drop his guard, which opens up his face. Two, body punches take your power meter down. Like in any you know, sort of uh, fighting video game where the power meter goes down, it does it in real life. It zaps your cardio, zaps your will, zaps your spirit. It's not like getting punched in the face where you just kind of go unconscious. Punches to the body really wear you down and hurt your cardio. And if you're wearing a mask like him, you gotta make sure your opponent's losing the cardio because you're probably not breathing that great either. And love the video game uppercut. Up in the air they go. Woo! And spinning back elbow. Devastating attack. Your opponent never sees it coming. See, this is a great move. Faked a left hand, went with a right hand, and then a kick. Beautiful technique. All right, spinning wheel kick. This is a devastating strike especially in steel-toed boots. If you can do a spinning wheel kick in steel-toed boots, you're probably gonna end up with some of your opponent's teeth in your soul. All right, here is King. King is clearly a pro wrestler. He's got the outfit, he's got the cape. He kind of looks like a mascot for a cryptocurrency company that Elon Musk is gonna invest in. He's clearly there for the flash and pizzazz. Now this is an incredible move and I'm so happy we're seeing it in a video game. This technique is called a twister. It is one of the rarest, cringiest, toughest submissions you can get in a mixed martial arts. You never see it standing, but you'll see it on the ground. An opponent will put one leg in, take the other person's arm, put it over their head, and basically just twist their spine till it hurts so much they can't be there anymore. Normally submission is all about using my strongest muscles against your smallest muscles. My arms against your throat, my legs against your arm. This one's the opposite. This one's my entire body weight and muscle against 
your spine and your trunk. Very, very rare. If you get that submission, you're winning submission of the year when the awards come out. All right, grip, little 180 spin, throw down. Again, pro wrestling move, tough to get in MMA, but damn, it looks fun. Now here's a cool combination. Right hook, overhand left, and uppercut. So you wanna use your punches to set up your next punch. So he's throwing an overhand left, which should, if his opponent is smart, means he'll defend things coming from this direction and bring his head down, which means it's pushing him right into my uppercut. So I can throw my left hook to set up my right. I can throw my right overhand to set up my left. In this case, left overhand, right into an uppercut, knockout. But he's using his claws too, which is a little extra. Get some meat. Overhand claw right. It's gonna need some stitches after that. And big throw. Very much a pro wrestling throw, because it's big, high amplitude, nice slam, he falls clean, but you also have no control over your opponent after that. So I used all that energy to get on top of them. This move, you don't have any control over him, but he's a pro wrestler. He's just looking for style points. That's a great combination. The right hand spinning back fist with your left. I throw a right hand knowing my left hand's coming next. Now I'm using my momentum to throw a right, and I'm just gonna keep going and do a spinning back fist. So I have two strikes on the same side, gaining more momentum after each strike. Oh, this is a great move by King. Coaches will tell their fighters, don't throw body kicks on a guy with good takedowns. Don't throw body kicks on guys that wrestle really well because they'll catch that leg and turn it into a takedown, which is exactly what King did here. Jiu Jitsu 101, double leg takedown, get on top of them, get the knee bar. Knee bar is basically an arm bar, but you guessed it on the knee. You're using your entire core on one knee joint to arch your back and bend that knee in the wrong direction. Hopefully they tap out or they're gonna be on crutches for a while. This is just absolute disrespect. Good back arch at the end though. So strike, grabs the arm, uses the momentum of his opponent coming in to throw his right hand. This is a great technique. It's a lot of really good like karate strikers. They'll time people coming in. They won't throw with a lot of power, but if opponents are coming in, you kind of doubled, tripled up your damage because their momentum and your momentum together compound, cause some more damage. And that's just pure pro wrestling right there. All right, let's take a look at Kuma. We've seen a lot of great human fighters so far. Now we've got a bear, a grizzly bear fighting in the snow with shoulder pads and a helmet. He's either ready for battle or he's going into laser tag. Bear hug, see what I did there? And bite the face. Right paw swipe. This is a great technique right here. Roll around on the ground, looking like an adorable little grizzly bear, and when your opponent comes in to take a selfie with you because you're looking so cute, bam, you punch him. So as legend would have it, Khabib Nurmagomedov, the greatest lightweight fighter of all time, wrestled a baby bear when he was a kid. There's video of it. They say it's Khabib Nurmagomedov. That's neither confirmed nor denied, but I choose to believe it. If they say he's 29 and 0 in MMA, maybe he's 30 and 0 together because he beat that bear. Butt strike, if you got it, use it. All right, that's a look at Tekken 7. Had a great time. Absolutely love King. Who hits a twister in video games? Love how video games are evolving more and more to involve grappling or intricate elements of submissions, jujitsu, wrestling, because that's real fighting, baby. The fight always goes to the ground, whether in the cage or in the street. You can follow me on social media. I'm at RJ Clifford MMA on Twitter and Instagram. And make sure you follow Gameology as well on YouTube and Facebook. Till next time, later. All right, you're gonna have to help me with pronunciation on this one. Fuck rum? Fuck who rum? Fuck who rum? Fuck who rum? Whom rum? Whom rum? All right, here's fuck whom rum. One more time.